I'm using Hannah's document to start out our day. She's turned in five reports so far. Now those five reports, that, that's totally it. You get those five reports, you want to put them into one. If you deployed your document mechanics, your style sheets, if you have headings one, two, three, and then you went to heading seven for your figures, heading eight for your tables, this becomes so super fast. Oh, I, I forgot to say one. And you did your citation manager. You do all those things at this progression, it'll be just like I show you now. It's going to take you 15 minutes. Okay, it's going to take me 35 minutes to do in front of the class because I'm going to talk about it and show step by step how to get there. But here's the way I approach this. I'm going to grab the first document she wrote. Open this rascal up. You'll notice I have the ribbon across the top. I, I want to keep that home ribbon showing. The first two pages, this is totally simple. The, the, the document, or I'm sorry, the figure you put on your cover page, it's wall candy. You don't cite your, your source. You don't need to have any numbering on that figure at that very cover page. It's wall candy. So show the picture you like to show. It's good to go. I'm not going to worry really about those. If, for instance, though, you borrowed that photograph from somebody else, and you do want to give a reference to it, which is totally good form, come to the second page on this series, which is really, you got your cover page, then your title page. Title page, that's where I want you to put in who you are, what this report is written for, and you can even have a statement there, a photograph courtesy of. And you say, well, who, who gave it to you? You just list it right there and you move on. There is no need to put that even into your literature cited. That's the only picture I want that to happen on, though. Now, big deal here is I click on that and I see right away this was made in the program set up for a table of contents. Okay, I see it because it's active text. You see it gray and I can come in, either click the update uh, table in this case. I always do the entire table. Boom, it's done. It just got updated and it got shortened. Did you see that? Why did it get shortened? Well, some reason references didn't fall into the right level. Oh, let's find out about that one when we get to it. Then the list of figures on a separate page, you don't need to do that. You can totally have them on the same page, just a paragraph return between. Okay? Now, the other thing I do is this uh, paragraph return, or this uh, paragraph icon here on the home ribbon. I turn that on, I see all the extra entries made. Okay, this is one that I'm going to pivot right back on you and say, wow, why? What, you had to have something on the very next page so you smack in those paragraph returns. Now, I'm going to say these things, and uh, Hannah, please don't take any offense to this. I'm totally fine that this is a setup, and it may be the first time you've ever used the style sheets. I'm good with that. There is no disrespect in talking about any of this uh, for any of you as I, I walk through the document, especially Hannah, because you know, I got your document open, but, and thank you for agreeing to let me use it. What I'm going to suggest you do, in every case, just get rid of this. You do not need all those extra returns. The second line of that is, there are no tables in this document. Okay, so even though I'm sure if I, yeah, step on heading one right there, list of tables, but you don't need it because you have no tables in this one. You do have them in the core document. So I'm going to go ahead and leave them for a moment and show you why. The, the other slap talk I uh, give to a lot of folks is all these extra paragraph returns. <laughs> that is so junior high. Come on, you can do better than that. We can do the same thing up here because this is just an artificial addition of space. Now let me, let me give you one other warning. See that big paragraph return there? That tells me that's a heading one. Up here in the table of contents, it's going to add a blank line. Update table. It's going to add a blank line to your table of contents because of that extra paragraph. Oh, and then I got all these. See what's happening here? Why did the figures just jump into our table of contents? It's because when you put the picture in there, it was also labeled heading one, 
or heading two or heading whatever you had in there. So we got to fix that up. You should always have your actual pictures that you inserted into your document as normal. Okay, the heading for it, that's for, if you watch the videos, you saw that's heading seven. Give it a heading seven. That's for the label, but the picture itself must be normal. Otherwise, your picture jumps into your table of contents. Okay, so we're going to leave that one there for right now and just say we got to revisit this one. I'm going to do an update on my list of figures as well. What do I get out of that? Okay, that looks a lot better, so it's the heading one that the figures got hit with. I got a lot of extra page numbers. I'm going to get in there and take them away in a minute. Come up here, the heading one pops up. You see the heading one in the style sheet ribbon. That, that's perfectly where it should be. I got my heading two. And I got a huge disparity between heading one and heading two. Right, I got 16 point heading one. I've got a, tw a 13 point heading two. How about we just uh, jump on to that heading one? Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this document, once it looks game ready, and I'm going to say this is going to get a brand new name, and I'm going to make it my core document. I'm then going to copy the content from number two and paste it into number one. I'm going to go to number three and paste it into that number one again, that core document one. Okay, I'm just going to build everything around this profile that we have right here. So this heading one, I'm going to right click on it and click modify. When I click modify, I can easily right there make a fast change. I want this to be 14 point, let's say. It's still bold? Yeah. Good. All done. It just made a global change all my heading ones. No more do you have to go through every time you used a heading one and manually set this font, that size, this bold, that italic. Forget about it. You do it once in that style sheet, you're good to go. Okay, now, this is my first figure one. As I look at this, I see it is a strong. You see that uh, highlighting on the ribbon up here for strong? A lot of folks did this kind of thing. Called it strong, called it, uh, oh, there's some other names up there, intense. Uh, yeah, intense entry, here's another one, or an emphasis, something else. Yeah, you can do them. And it works okay the first time through, but really, you're making extra work for yourself again. A lot of extra work. What I totally recommend, you make it heading seven. And probably I'm going to do that before we progress too much further here, just to back structure it. Okay, for all of you, you're going to see why that back structuring is going to happen here, but first we make the, the walkthrough on this figure first, and then a question before that. Okay, the, the reason is because you have to do a modified table of contents for your list of figures. And in that case, and I'll totally walk you through it, uh, I want to tell it, don't use headings 1, 2, and 3, throw them out. Go down to heading 7 and make it a level 1. And specifically just for your list of figures. Then you've got to do another specifically just for your list of tables. That's going to be heading 8. But to get there, I, I guarantee you, less than a minute, every one of them done perfectly every time. But that is a, a, a great lead into it. Not, I'm not going to touch the strong right now, but look what happens when I click my mouse right beside that figure. I'm up here on heading 2. That's why those figures jumped into my table of contents because it's a heading two. I'm going to make that a normal. Okay, the next line down, it's also a heading two, but it's a blank paragraph return. I want to get rid of that as well, make it a normal. Okay, how about this one? Yeah, and we see the extra paragraph returns already. This is what everybody does, and, and I won't, again, not picking on Hannah because everybody does this. I did it a number of times. Okay, that's been 40 years, but you, you get the idea. We had computers back then, but yeah, everybody says, yeah, you had, those aren't computers. My smartphone is smarter than that computer. And I tell you, you're right. I'm going to take that paragraph, return out the references. Now, before I fix, I don't know, I'll fix the, uh, the figure first. Put my cursor right there. It's a normal now. Yeah. On the line before my references, I just want to slide up here to my layout ribbon. There's a pull down over here, uh, breaks, there it goes. 
and I want to have a continuous section break next page. Or I could just say, I want a next page without a section break difference. Now my references are on the top of their own page. Okay, this is the kind of thing you can hit without putting in all those extra paragraph returns. It just, it, it, it bar uh, turns around and bites you, doesn't it? Because all of a sudden you've entered three or four lines up above in an editing action and your references is no longer at the top of the page, it's now about halfway down because you hit enter about five times to make it perfect placement. Okay, that works that instant until you change a little something here or a little something there. You, you just don't want to really fall into that one. What I'm going to go back to is that table of contents that was made and say, now I am going to redo this. I can just hit the update field, do the entire set, and bang. All of a sudden, it does fit. There are no figure headings in there. And I can come back and take out the rest of that stuff. My list of figures, still looking great. Take out those extra paragraph returns. Okay, the list of tables on this document, you don't need them, but we're going to combine this with some others. So I save it as a different name. This is another uh, uh, tactic I've uh, taken for years on this. I'm going to give it to my file ribbon. I'm going to do a save as. And I'm going to step up right here. I'm just going to give it a different uh, 2019, 10, what's the day, the 28th? Okay, that little date stamp that didn't work because I don't have my num locks on. Yeah, there we go. That little uh, time indicator at the end of my uh, files. I literally, when I'm working on a document that's going to take more than 10 minutes to write, I may be working on it two days, three days, or five months. About three years. I don't care. I don't want to be working on the document and have it crash. Anybody ever had the document crash on them? Yeah, oh yeah, we all do. And you have to turn around and kick yourself to say, oh my God, I don't have a backup. Doink, right? Okay, I've done that. I got this flat forehead because of it. But I stopped doing the head slaps because I do that date stamp and change the file name every single day I touch it. I come back in, open it up. First thing I do is save the name as a, uh, at a different number on the end of the name. Hey, when I get all done, I may have 15 or 20 or 500 versions of the document. It's taking up a lot of space, right? After I turn in the last document, it's done deal. I delivered it to my client. I go back in and delete all the old ones, all except one or maybe two. Leave two of them so that if something happens to my best end of the game document, I can still turn back to the most previous or most recent document I had. It's just good form. And you're going to thank yourself because it costs you nothing. A little tiny itsy bitsy bit of time. Okay, that's all you have to take. I'm going to hit save, done deal. It's now working under this new name format, and I'm ready to say I don't need that extra page either. I'll take the section break out. Okay. Now, the other thing, I got the I, double I, triple I on the first section, and right here it starts with page one. Get down here, I got page two. Okay, that's good form. Is it a requirement? Well, I'm just going to say I, I really like to see it. If you can put the I, double I, triple I, and that is in the page settings, I'm just going to take the step up, put my cursor in that first section. With the cursor here, now I just come to the insert ribbon, over to the right-hand side, and I've got page numbers. Come down here to format page numbers. Okay, and I hit it, I get this little applet open up, and I can see the I, double I, triple I right here is the page number format, and I want to restart a I, or one. Right? I hit OK. That's now the I, double I, triple I. With the cursor selected in this next section, I just repeat the process. And it's one, two, three. That's restart at one, and I'm good. Is this a super requirement? No, but it makes it look in a good form. You'll like how that works for you. Keep saying that, and now with this saved, I'm going to step back into my list of documents. Go to number two. Something I didn't look at at all there was her citation manager. But let's, let's look at that once I do this one as well. Okay, the reason that I'm, I'm pulling this one up now and pausing right here is when you do the copy of your document two to put into your document, well, now core, 
it's going to be added to the basis of document one because all the format is there. Hopefully you're following the same protocols for your heading seven for your figures, heading eight for your tables, and walking through it like that. And I've said this to, to a lot of folks, if you want to use that intense style setting for your figures, okay, be consistent. You're making extra work for yourself. I'm showing you that right now, but when you do the second document now, don't copy this stuff. Okay, I can see on her table of contents, she used I, double I, triple I on the first section and then the one, two, three after that. Don't copy that. Or this, list of figures. They're looking good. List of tables, ah, she does have a table here. So that is gonna tell us a lot about why I left that table up above. Right here is where I want you to start making your selections for your document to move to the next uh, report. In other words, they're gonna go to the top of this line and I'm just going to do that selection through, just jump on my keyboard through all these beautiful figures and tables, and right there, references starts. I don't want to take it. Leave it where it is. Why? Because that came in her citation manager format. She made citations throughout the area that I have collected already. That's where your references are gonna be combined. So, hit copy. I go back to the first document we were in. Yeah, that's number two. Come on, Bill. There's my core document. Okay, so this is my Geologic Foundation, the Kamiak Butte. It's a great heading one name, by the way. So we're leaving it there. Jump to the end of this. And I could even go after that page break. Nah. I'm going to go before it. Right there. Okay, this is, wow, is this the one on heading one? Good. Right there now I'm going to paste it. Just jumped in. I'll go to the very top of this. This is where one of your tricks is going to hurt you if you weren't careful. <laughs> in other words, if you weren't consistent. If you used heading one, two, three, for your main document headings, they'll all slide in perfectly right here. And so far, so good. Look at this, now I come down to figure one. That's a figure heading nine. Oh, wait a minute. Were those others figure heading nine in the first document? Hmm, that doesn't look right, does it? It's not, because, yeah, now it is. Now it's a figure heading nine. How about my heading one? I mean, my figure one. It's a heading nine as well. Okay, we're looking better now, except this one is labeled one. Not a problem, I just gotta come back here to heading, either update it, right click on it, and do an update field. Yeah, where is it? It's not, this is where it starts to get a little cumbersome, but it's not a problem because I'm gonna re-click heading one, uh, figure nine didn't work, I'm gonna give it a heading three. Go back to heading nine. Now, you see that? I had to take it out of the style, reapply the style, click, click, done. It's now heading three, or figure three, I'm sorry. Do we have to do the same on the next? No, it took it up because the first one in the series, it got renamed, renumbered, it's all heading nines. Wow, super fast, right? Six, you're on it. A lot of extra paragraph returns. I love to take those out. You don't really need them, but I'll let that be your, your touch on it. Uh, how about down here now, our table. What table heading level was used on these? Hannah, do you remember? You believe you used eight. Okay, I'm gonna jump over to that document and say, this shows heading eight. Totally right. So why isn't it showing right here as a heading eight? Am I blind and not seeing it or do you see it there? Okay, I'm not seeing it so I am going to go back into my style headings and say I need that eight. I don't see it showing up. This pull-down icon right here, I can see heading eight. You've got it. 
I want to do a modify. And that modify, I'm always going to grab this lower button of format. I want to hit numbering. And it's a one, two, three. The, the style sheet setting didn't copy over. You did it right on the first document. But it didn't follow over, so I need to renumber. I'm sorry, the, for the figure numbering. Come up here, the custom. Define new number format. And right there, it's a table word. Capital T. Space after. Anybody ever try typing on a keyboard that you're not used to, standing up at an angle that's wrong? Everything's done. Forget about it. But you see now table one works fine. We say OK, make it go away. It's a table one. Perfect entry. And again, even though that didn't copy over, if you've done it before, you know the settings and how to get there. It takes you 15, 20 seconds. OK. I got them. Now look at my references menu. I'm going to do a right click and update field. Do you see that? All the citations she made in that copy over document came with it and got built into the citations made. You don't copy your citations or your references, your works cited. Don't copy them there. Copy them in your citation text. And all the time, you're always going to be able to come up here to your references, go to your manage sources, and this is where you're going to see all the documents or all the citations you've made through these two documents so far. That left-hand column you see on the screen is empty right now. It's because this is a, a public computer. Nothing gets saved here. But for your computer that you use to write these reports, that same list will appear on that left-hand screen. That's what you get to keep with you. If you watch those videos, you saw one of the settings where I said, I have about 1,000 documents sitting on that left-hand panel. That left-hand panel is everything I've ever cited on those machines. I can pull them at any time to the new one. And it pops up as one of my available citations. So much easier than doing the research all over again. So I, I really want them populated perfectly every time. OK, I'm going to hit Save again and say we need to step into document number three. Same deal, same drill. Pass the table of contents, pass my figures. There are no tables in there. Oh, man. Wow. There is a report here. I guarantee you I've been there before. So does Hannah, right? Yeah, a couple times. OK, I'm doing the same thing again, copying a whole bunch of paragraph returns that don't need to be there, leaving the references out. Copy. Jump over to the other document. Paste. No, that's number three again. Where's my, oh, of course. Assuming that every computer has the same set of commands on every step, right? Uh, I'm going to hit paste now. Same drill on the figures. I've just got to make sure that they're always bringing across exactly the labeling that I needed to have. Home ribbon up here to heading heading nine for figure. That's not what you used, is it, Hana? I can't say again? OK, and for some reason, there's a figure one manually entered here instead of this automatic numbering. So that's, that's part of this idea that, oops, making extra work for yourself. Uh, but again, heading nine, no. How about I do an update, right click, update field. It doesn't like that. So I've just got to step out of that heading nine for or figure four. And now back onto it, renumbered. See that? Took it out of the heading, put it back in the, the right heading, and the automatic numbering took off perfectly. Let's see if our heading 10 does the same thing for us. Our figure 10 does the same thing. Yeah, it does. What about the, uh, the images themselves? Just going to do that double check that, yeah, that's normal. This one too? No, it's a heading two. Okay. This happens so frequently, folks, that it's going to appear in your table of contents. All you have to do to get it out is call the figure itself normal. And all these extra paragraph returns down here, hey, guess what? They're all heading two as well. They're going to be blank lines in your table of contents. Wasted space. 
First, get rid of them. You don't need that. And your document definitely doesn't need it. If I get to Woodland Biome there and I say, well, that's too close to the fixture. I've got to put paragraph returns to get a little bit of space there. Hey, super simple for you. Go up here to your ribbon on heading two, modify, and hit the paragraph return off your format ribbon. And right there. Hey, I want the space before to be, I don't know, 12 points. The space after to be six. Say OK. Make it go away. Perfect spacing now. That's the way to use the documents tools to make your progression through this whole process super simple. Just tell it to give it that extra space. If you have to have that full paragraph return, hey, give it 24 points. Not an extra paragraph return. Just that space before will totally make your life better. Now, as far as this goes, because you use the style settings for your figure nine layout right here, and I'll even show you where it is. I right click, modify. I want you to come down to the format ribbon and grab paragraph. On paragraph, there's two tabs up here. Take the one on the right hand side. See that? Right down the line, keep with next. Always your figure label will appear on the page with the figure it represents. If you don't have an extra paragraph return put in, you just have the label and then the figure with a little space extra, which is uh, determined by the paragraph icon. Just, hey, you need 12 point after, fine, take it. Or six point, use it. Don't like them touching each other? Okay, put that space in, not a paragraph return. Otherwise, that little setting right there, keep with next, will be keeping your label with a blank line. You're like, oh man, I didn't think of that one. This is the way to think of it. I guarantee it's going to work for you every single time. You won't have to worry about any pagination problems. Okay, we got the biomes in. I can go all the way down to my uh, lit cited. I do another update field. Just like that, all the citations that were made throughout the document just fit in. Now, if you went in and manually entered them, it's a done deal. You've got to go back and do it all over again. You've got to go through and find out what citation did I miss, and do I have to manually enter it right here? Wait, alphabetical. Do I, how do I alphabetize an apostrophe in somebody's name? De la zone. How do you put the, the apostrophe after the D? Oh, man. I, I, I know I, I heard about this somewhere. Well, I don't worry about it. I let Microsoft figure it out for me. Okay, I mean, I'm getting renditious on this, but uh, that's fine. I'm going to grab number four. Same deal again. Leave the table of contents where it stands. Leave the figures and tables. First line of text. Take it down the line. Lots of references. You see what she did here as well? She put her table three at the top of a page, and she needed a whole bunch of paragraph returns to make her references appear on their own page. Okay, again, you don't need to do that. And, and again, I'm not picking on Hannah here because everybody does this. Everybody. Copy it. Go back over to the, your core document. Just want to slip in, and when I paste these in, I really, really want to make sure that I'm not making extra work for myself. Okay, that's on normal setting. I hit paste. Tables and figures all have to go through the same process again. I come back here. I'm just going to make it an 8, and now go back to 9. Look at that. Figure 11 popped on. A little tiny bit of extra work, but you just have to be conscious of this. Figures and tables on that automatically numbered idea you maybe have to turn it off and then back on again. Done deal. Again, I, I don't like those extra paragraph returns, so I take them out. But you also notice that figure one, same deal here again. Figure 12 now. Table one. Okay, I'm going to turn it off and now back to table. It's back to the correct table two. Table, same setup. Changes heading back to table two, you gone it. Except table two moved a long ways over. There it is. So you got some rogue character right there. 
And back to the same table problem. There it is, table four. How many references did she have before? And let's see, about that many. How about update field? Oh, just popped it right way up. Now, if you use the same exact citation from your settings within your citation manager, that left-hand panel I mentioned where the thousand of my uh, computer in my home desktop, okay, on that machine, if I just moved them over that way, I won't have any replicated citations here. But if you entered Zamora twice for the exact same article and there's a little bit of a difference, Word will say this is a different citation because your entry was different. Okay, now you have to go through that citation manager and kind of take care of it. You got to take one of them out and put the right one in. Right, take a look at your document. Make sure you're not duplicating your citations. It's a little more difficult to do in, in the style, uh, I'm sorry, in the citation manager of Word, but it's not impossible. You can see the references building up nicely. This is where the next layer is going to go in. That was number four, right? So I did one, two, three, four. I want to grab number five. Same kind of deal. Okay, got the copy. Oops, go back to my core, paste it in. Okay, other than these heading twos being rogue out here and uh, eating us up, they're, they're never going to do you a favor. What is going to do you that favor that I keep talking about is uh, use the style settings to say I want a space before. Make a 24 point. Keep with next will always keep your heading with the next line down or the photograph that it refers to. Maybe in your tables, the same kind of way. Much, much better than smacking in paragraph returns. They never treat you right. It's kind of like eating those cookies after dinner. Hey, I won't gain any weight, right? You know you will. Okay, this is the idea. You don't need the candy uh, just to make it go fast and easy. You want to make it look really, really good. Same deal on the figures, isn't it? Again, the fix is just step it up and say, that's a figure heading nine, good, and I'm going to go make it an eight. Now it's a nine again, it's number 13. Sometimes that next, yeah, 14 automatically did it because it knew to follow the one before it. Okay, now the other side of this is if you stepped into your document and you did what I've asked you to do, which is to reference your figures before you show them. Okay, I'll, I'll try it here with figure 14. Do you have a figure 14 entry right here? Uh, right now I'm not seeing it. Hannah, do you remember on 14, did you introduce it? First? Good answer. There should be, yeah. Second line, right there, it says figure two. Okay, now, she did it manually, right? Okay, yeah, we see that. Here's why you don't want to do it manually. If you use the tool inside of it, this is going to take her a little bit more time to manage her document because I want to go back to references and I want to come over to this cross-reference. All I have to do is grab that, scroll down my list and say that was figure 14, right? If I find my figure 14, a little bit more, Bill, come on, there it is. Figure 14, it's a paragraph number, I hit an insert, close. There's my figure 14. I give it a space after. Now. This hypertext, or active text, because when I click on it, it turns gray outline, that active text will always update with the, not the number of the figure, but that item that it referred to. It made a cross-reference to that number, and right now its paragraph name is figure 14. Hey, if it was table two, it would have the update to table two. Okay, this is that cross-reference mechanism. Use it, folks. You don't want to have to waste your time going through your document again and again and saying, oh my gosh, this says figure one, and I really meant it to go to figure eight. Okay, if you just have that cross-reference in there, done deal. You're going fast and easy. That's the kind of thing I really, really encourage you to do is follow these through. Make it work for you.
I don't mean to rhyme. It just happened that way. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. She's saying, I didn't do that on the very first document, or second, or third, or fourth, and uh, is it better that I do it after I put them together or before? Personally, it's a lot better to be accurate if you do it before because you're going to go in and say, I'm going to reference that figure right there, and it's figure one right now, so I can make that figure one as a cross-reference entry. As long as you copy them together and paste them just like I've done here, you're going to save your time. Otherwise, you're going, to, you're going to see that figure one, and you think, oh my gosh, that, what number is it now? You have to realign yourself. Now it's renumbered. It's number 14. And yeah, so I would do it before you copy it and move it. Okay, All that, folks, is easy step through. And what have I been here? About half an hour on this document so far as I talk about it to you. And you're darn near good to go, except you know, there's one figure 14 that is done right. Uh, the rest of them, you got to make sure somewhere in here is talking about figure 15. Okay, and where that figure 15 is, you got to do the cross reference again and hit it on. Okay, the other side though, as I want to go back to the references over to the um, managed sources, there we go. When I look at this now, I've got a huge list. Oh, Hannah's got a huge list. Really good. Just on that screen, walk them through one at a time. Make sure there's no duplicates walking down that line. The other sideline I'm going to hit for you is something like this one. I want to hit edit. Who is LLC? Okay, for my company, that's a D&D Lyrics LLC. That's a limited liability company. And I wonder, who is LLC? I have to go back and look. Perfect answer. But this is one that I... Uh, I keep showing folks, and I don't know if the word gets around or what, but this is the line for a person. It's Schlosser, comma, space, W period, E period, done. I'm not Bill, comma, space, D, as in Dr. Bill. Okay, that's who I am in the classroom walking around talking to you all, but my name for citations is Schlosser. Okay, LLC, it totally tells me at least as a supposition, that this next line down should be clicked, corporate author. That corporate author is where you would put the D&D Lyrics, LLC. This is where you put Warehouser. How about U.S. Forest Service? You just go across all your citations where it's not a person because all, all, everybody, it seems, uh, went to the University of Idaho geology page, Geology 101, to pull out a whole bunch of citations because they had the great pictures. I, I get a smile right there. You did it totally. Okay, that's fine, but I don't want to see N period D period for the author, N period D period for the date. I'll repeat this one over and over again, but you can find who owns that website. Okay, like uidaho.edu, done deal. It's University of Idaho entered right there on that corporate author. You put in the name of the institution and it won't break it up like it would if you tried to enter them as the person author, the Schlosser, comma, W period, E period. Okay, right there, University of Idaho would appear on the corporate author line. And here, I'm guessing it's a company name who is a limited liability company. Hey, that, that's super simple. It appears right down there. Okay, it's dictionary.com. That may actually be owned by an LLC or an incorporated company, it doesn't matter. You put that actual owner on that line. Next site is the date. That U of I site had no copyright date on it. Hey, I'll just say it this way, guys. It's super simple and super sloppy by the U of I not to put a date on the bottom of their page. Okay, they're not copywriting it. Hey, they are. Just by putting it up, they own the copyright on it. That's why we have to cite it. If you can't find the copyright date, you looked everywhere, that's fine. Use the date that you got the data. You went to the site in 2019 in October on the 5th. That's your date. That's your citation information right there. And you see it walking right down that line. What is the year, the month, the day? Hey, if they don't have their own copyright, use the day that you grab the information off that web page. The thing that tells me as a reviewer, I'm looking at it to say, okay, super clear. That's the day you grabbed it, and it was current to that date. Because today, 
this afternoon, they may change it. And all of a sudden, your data is wrong. No, your data was right the day you pulled it off. This is the way to cover your own back. I want you to get in there and put those dates on there. I want you to find that kind of a name and put them on every single time. I can say for this class, nobody should enter N period D period or leave it blank and make Microsoft Word enter the no date indicator, the no author indicator. You don't need that. Find out who owns the website. And if you can't find it, then you're going to enter dictionary.com if there are no owners to that web domain. It's super fast, folks. Stephanie. <laughs> Stephanie brings up a great, great point. Thank you for bringing it on because this art thing, okay, this art thing, whenever there's a photograph, really that's art. Okay, somebody did an artful photograph and you want to use it, great. And there is no place right there on that super short list. Oh my gosh, where do I put the date? Who's the artist? Well, the artist is super simple. For the Kamiak View field trip reports, most of you, it's you. You had the camera, you took the photo, or maybe somebody else on your team. And you're using their name as your citation. That's fine, but now how about that year? It's this one right here, folks. Show all bibliography fields. Oh my gosh, all of a sudden about nine different entries became available. You see one right there for a year. Enter the year. You took the photograph at the field trip in September. Enter the year right there. It's 2019. You know who the photography was. It was you. Put your name as the artist. You treat it just like any other citation. That's the last name, comma, initials. First initial period, second initial period. Everybody does the same thing on this one, by the way. You enter their full name and then a comma. And then the next author, full name and then a comma. And when it comes time for the citation manager, it's totally going to mess you up. Oh, what am I talking about, mess you up? Okay, first, let, let's talk about that mess you up portion, but right here, you see it for the artist? You got to turn on that show all bibliography fields, and that's where you're going to see the year show up. Enter it on, and you're good to go. Now, I'm going to cancel right here because this is just making a change on LEC, dictionary.com. Hannah's going to get it. Totally right. But now I want to go up here and I'm going to do a new. How about we do that? What kind of source were we talking about? Stephanie, it was uh, just to do art again? I can't hear. Okay, the art, we covered that one though, right? It was a multiple author thing. Okay, let, let me just go to a journal article. Okay, it's right here, the author line. I keep talking about myself, okay. Comma, W, period, E, period. Now I got another author, okay. The w only way to make this always work is a semicolon. Most frustrating thing is Microsoft Word never published this. You don't get to see that until you flub it up and then you get the errors until you put a semicolon down and then you get it. Stephanie. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, I'm going to hit a cancel on this because it's a good point, Stephanie. It doesn't have to be through that interface. I can come up here to insert citation. At the bottom of this, add new source. Okay, and right there, I can add that brand new source, whether it's a journal article or not, but I'm just going to enter one now. Oh, to add the new source? Oh, to add, use the edit button right here and add them one at a time. Perfect way to get there. It's going to insert that uh, semicolon for you every time you do it. Okay, that, that whole progression, though, is I, I've seen... Actually, Stephanie, I think it was on yours uh, because I'm pulling up the uh, documents. It was on the, uh, uh, the report for your role, your own topic was about lichen. I think one of your citations was a name, a comma, a name, a comma, a name, a comma, a name, a comma. It was a Japanese series of authors. I think it had three authors, but you had about six showing because they were all separated by commas instead of semicolons. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
Yeah, yeah. You always use the, the edit button? Okay, just look at these because if you don't have that first name, I'm sorry, that last name, comma, initials for your middle name and first name, and then a semicolon, it's going to be a little trickier to manage. Okay, not, not to say exactly that's what happened and how it happens, but this edit name, what uh, Stephanie just talked about, is right on the mark. You got edit, you can add additional. Okay, now with all this said, I want to make sure you know you still have to come up here to your table of contents. Now, one, edit table. How about update table? Okay, I'm going to do the right click, update table, do the whole thing. Look at my page numbers. They're not mine, they're Hannah's. Uh oh, we've got the figures, did our same thing to us. I got jumped to that again. Say, nope, that's got to be normal. I know now that's a home heading to, back to normal. Jump back up to the top, do it again. Update field, lower button, say OK. Whew, look at that. You've got a 22-page document. Walk through yourself beautifully. This is super fast compared to coming in and manually redoing all your citations, manually redoing all your page numbers or your figure numbers, table numbers, on and on like that. The only thing that the references, I gotta say about maybe a tenth of you in this class have done it on your last few documents. Almost nobody did it on the first three. Okay, that is to your own de de demise right there. It's just gonna be extra time you have to spend. So. You can start to figure this out, and the idea that you guys are going to do it before you make the copy over, I think it's totally time well spent. What I will say, for instance, now, I grabbed uh, Hannah's document without any forewarning except last night an email saying, hey, can I use yours? And saying, yeah, go ahead, Bill. I use it. It took me about 20 minutes to get everything aligned.